Hey guys, Ivan here and welcome to another video. In this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding news. We're gonna start with this one, it's about Hunter Labrada. Finally, we got an answer from Ben Chow, Hunter Labrada's coach. What exactly went wrong during that peak week or in the prep overall? We got an answer from that guy on Fu Arabiat's podcast and we're gonna listen to that. Before we get to that, I wanna show you this comparison that Hunter posted on his Instagram. And by the way, guys, I'm sorry if I sound a little nasal, I got a little cold, it's nothing really, it's almost gone. Anyways, Hunter, he's back. Now, if you take a look at his back on the left photo, you take a look at it and you think like, this is not exactly a great back double bicep. And then if you compare left and right these two photos, you can't really see like too many differences. As he says in the caption, at least my calves grew, his calves do look bigger. That's one thing that does look bigger, everything else kind of looks similar, but... If you pay attention, if you take a look at the right photo, the new photo from now, from January 2023, and you don't really compare muscle for muscle, like uh, lats for lats, traps for traps, uh, rear delts, I don't know, arms, if you compare everything, you can see that there isn't really big of a difference, but if you look at the photo, like the pose as a whole, you wouldn't say that the right photo looks like horrible back double bicep. Left one, not very good. I also wouldn't say horrible, but like pretty weak, probably his weak, definitely his weakest pose. However, right now on the right one, it's a difference. Like it's 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 an obvious difference. So I think he improved his back. I just think he didn't really showcase his absolute best package on that stage. It was not only a peaking mistake, but also like dieting mistake. So let me show you guys what Bang Chao had to say about what went wrong. What happened to Hunter? Why wasn't he at his absolute best? The timing and pacing of things probably wasn't the best. I, we were holding him heavy for quite a while, all the way into about six weeks out. And I think actually we should have been moving him along a little quicker than that. Um, and then we had to drag him down probably a bit too much in from six weeks to a week out. So that was probably a, an error in, in pacing of things. I mean, there's a long off season. And so that makes things trickier. You, the body doesn't always respond as you're anticipating it to, you know, and things were responding from like 20 weeks out to 12 weeks out real, real nice. And then at 12 to six, we kind of stagnated and we lost a bit of time there. And then in terms of the peak process, we know we learn a lot in terms of what doesn't work for his body and what does work for his body. We both took ownership of not happy with how things played out. Alright, so basically what Ben is saying is that the prep did not last as long as it was supposed to. The pacing was kind of wrong, like uh, they weren't really pushing things on time. They wanted to keep Hunter as big as possible and they started dieting him down aggressively a little bit too late. So he lost some fullness, he had to get flatter than he would if they started aggressively a little bit sooner. And also it was a long off season, so they didn't really know what to expect. And as far as peak week... Uh, he didn't really go into specifics about this, he said they, they learned a lot as to what works and what doesn't work. And I left that part for the end uh, of his explanation where he said that they both took ownership of what happened. That Hunter is most likely not gonna fire Ben Chow because they both kind of made mistakes. Uh, would this mistake happen if he was coached by somebody more experienced or maybe more knowledgeable? Like, for example, I don't know, Honey Rambud? Be my guest, tell me what do you think. But I think Ben Chow does deserve a second chance. Let's see what's gonna happen next year when they do another show. Now that uh, Ben has more experience with Hunter, I'm sure he's going to be able to pick him better for the next show he does. I don't know which show is it gonna be. As soon as I find out, I will make sure to let you know, guys. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channel. If you guys are looking for an incredible tasting protein powder, I will suggest to you Old School Labs Vintage Brown. This is a new flavor, pumpkin spice. It tastes delicious, like the best flavor of whey protein probably that I ever tried. And uh, it has three kinds of protein sources in it. It's actually egg white protein, a beef isolate protein, and whey isolate protein. And if you guys use a code EVAN and you click on the link down below in the description of this video, you get a 15% discount. So guys, if you want to support me and my channel, you like my videos, this is definitely the way to do it. So thank you guys. Alright, next we got another video, a longer video of Callum Von Moger, where he kind of goes a little bit more in depth about what happened to him 
over the course of a past couple of years. He talks a little bit about his uh, addiction, about his uh, health problems, about you know his mental state. He did have some serious issues going on in the past couple of years. And during those bad years for Callum, he kind of tried a couple of times to do some damage control on his social media, to make a statement, but he always seemed like he wasn't really okay. This time it's definitely different. This time I can I can believe him. Like I believed him a couple of times during that period, but it turned out that he was not being honest, that he was still doing all the bad stuff that he was doing before, but now he actually seems clean. I'm gonna play a little part of this video to you where he addresses the public. He actually says, I'm gonna take my hat off for this. So he takes his hat off, he looks straight into the camera, and he speaks to us. Very honestly, I would have to say, I think he looks very genuine and I kind of feel for him and I feel bad for liking all those Trigili videos where he was bashing this guy, ripping him a new hole, basically. And in this video, I, I kind of really feel for Callum. I don't know, maybe I'm naive, but you guys tell me what do you think. Let me show you this little part of this video. Camera and say, yeah. give them one message, what would that be? Yeah, absolutely. I take off all my hats and everything, so I would just say, first of all, that I'm extremely grateful and, uh, and appreciative of, uh, of all of you who have followed my journey. Some of you have been uh, um, you know, behind me since day one for, for several years and uh, I want to uh, express my gratitude to each of you who have reached out and, uh, in, in times where I wasn't doing so well um, and I was struggling and you know, I apologize for my absence and uh, uh, I would like to um, you know, apologize that just for the last year you know, that I wasn't really myself that I was, and I, I must say that I was going through a lot at the time um, uh, when I had my accidents and incidences uh, you know, and uh, look mental health is a real thing Alright, so what do you guys think? What is the vibe that you get when you're watching this video? Do you believe him? Do you think this year is gonna be different for Callum? Do you think he's actually gonna come back and be more active on his social media and stay sober and, you know, take care of his mental health and stuff like that? Do you think he's gonna be fine? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. And I'm showing you this photo. This is from Mr. Universe when he won. Uh, I think it was 2015 or 14. Uh, it was the WFF, I believe, Federation. And this is around the time when I heard about him the first time. And he says in this video, some of you guys have followed me for a long time. And I am one of those guys. I used to follow him way back then when he was all about bodybuilding. And then he was all about YouTube. I follow his YouTube channel as well. He wasn't so much about competitive bodybuilding. Not as much. He did compete but he wasn't really living the lifestyle completely. He was more like training and eating kind of right and like using gear and stuff. He looked great, he looked amazing, but he wasn't like hardcore bodybuilder. And then he went all the way out of bodybuilding and I hope he's going to come back. I hope he's going to get back on the right path. Whatever you guys think about Calum and Mogger, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, next up we have a story about Eddie Hall. So after his very successful career in Strongman where he won the world's strongest man, he tried himself in boxing where he boxed the guy that was his biggest rival when he was competing in Strongman after Bjornsson and now Eddie Hall is gonna try and compete in bodybuilding and this is a photo of him practicing some bodybuilding posing, uh, he posted a video in which he's uh, kind of going through poses and he's talking about his plans as far as competing, which show he's gonna do. Let me show you this little video where he explains his uh, plans and where he practices his poses. Fly high, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. spread, the, spread the lats like wings. You have to do this, that's what doesn't count. Put it here on it. Okay. Uh, what else, Jamie? Uh, You're not even into bodybuilding, are you? <laughs> Little old me. Uh, what? Oh, what's that one that Arnold does? And it's like the one uh, I like that. It's that one. That's, that's, <laughs> is that it? That's the one. Is that it? I think so, yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got that one. Is it like that? <laughs> that's the Arnold pose, isn't it? That? That's the one. So. <laughs> I think that gives you a good idea where I'm at. 360 pounds. So I guess, what am I aiming for? I'm not gonna be Big Ram. I'm thinking more like Terry's done. You know, a bit like, it's sort of in between. It's a bit like Chris Bumstead. 
All right, so he wants to do classic physique. Obviously, this is a joke. He would not make a good bodybuilder, no chance. He does not have any any kind of genetics for that for, for that sport. <laughs> I mean, look at the, he's not that fat. Like you can see some abs on his stomach, but he kind of like messed up his physique completely doing a strongman training. Uh, he does have a lot of fat. Sure, if he got rid of all this fat. Uh, maybe he would look much better, but like how much better? Like, does he have the right, the right structure for bodybuilding, uh, for classic physique? Definitely not. Uh, for open bodybuilding, not really. The funny thing is, back in the day when he was a young guy, he actually had pretty good. Look at this. Look at his body. Like right now, he could not do bodybuilding, no way. But back in the day, he actually was pretty. He looked like a potential for bodybuilding. I don't know if you guys saw some of these photos before, but like when he was young, before he started his strongman career, he actually had some really good body parts, he had a pretty good structure, he actually looked like a good potential for bodybuilding, and he obviously ruined his physique by doing strongman. As you can see, he was very muscular, like he had a lot of muscle on his body very early on when he was very, very young. And you don't become the strongest man in the world if you don't have crazy muscle building genetics. If he really wanted to take that route, if he wanted to build muscle instead of getting stronger, he probably could have built a really nice physique and he probably would have done well as a bodybuilder. I don't know if he would turn pro, but I'm sure he would have great genetics for building muscle. So I don't think he would stay in like classic or something like that. I think he would be able to build enough muscle to do open bodybuilding. Now as far as structure, I don't know if he would have like the, the, the right ratio, waist to, to shoulders, wrist, stuff like that. I think his physique is more built for strongmen, but I think he will still do well. Maybe he would never turn pro, maybe he would turn pro but never win a pro show. I don't know how far would have he be able to go, but he definitely looked like he had a lot of potential for bodybuilding back in the day. Not today, not today though, definitely not today. He, he, can, he could not do bodybuilding anymore. His physique is really not meant for that. Uh, he's joking, of course. Maybe he's not joking, maybe he's gonna try. I would love to see him try. I would like to see him try and get completely shredded. Like, he's not fat, like, he's pretty lean still. He just blew out his stomach a little bit too much and he has a lot of loose skin and he definitely doesn't have enough muscle in his legs and his arms. It's all in his torso, which is a ideal for strongman I guess but not for bodybuilding but his posing is great I think he really has a gift for posing I think he would be a really graceful poser no but seriously if he actually decided to do for jokes you know like a, like a, let's say physique competition and let's say Hafter Bjornsson also decided to do the show to compete against Eddie I think Thor would win again because look at his physique, like he has definitely a much better looking physique, he did not blow out his midsection as much as Eddie did, I don't know why, uh, but he does look much better right now. Anyways, tell me what do you guys think about Eddie Hall's physique and what would be his potential in bodybuilding if he actually decided to compete to switch to bodybuilding. Alright, and finally we got a physique update of Samson Dauda. So Samson said in the most recent podcast with Fuad that he actually ate junk food for two weeks straight. And this is his first training after the Mr. Olympia. And guys, look at his physique right now. He did not he, he did not get fat one bit. Like I don't even see a film of water or any kind of fat. Like I don't see a gram of fat on his body that he gained. He looks just the same after two weeks of eating uh, horribly, as he says. So I'm sure this prep for Arnold Classic is going to be much different. His prep for Mr. Olympia was really tough because he had to really suffer. He had to do like crazy low carbs. I think he was like running 50 grams of carbs for I don't know how many days. So now when he's this shredded and he can't get fat. His metabolism is so fast right now and if he keeps, if he continues prepping for the next show, he's never gonna slow it down. So I'm sure he's gonna have a lot more food coming to that show. So I'm expecting Samson Dauda to be a much better version of himself at the Arnold Classic instead of Mr. Olympia. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.